What's going on everyone, how are we doing? I hope you've all had an incredible week. In today's video, I'm gonna cover one of the most important aspects when learning to trade, overcoming fear. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do me a favor, hit the button below. It means a lot. A lot of you are watching these videos week in, week out, but you're not yet subscribed. YouTube shows me the stats. It's around 45% of you. So yeah, do me a favor, hit the button. Fear in trading is something I know very well. I've had my fair share of experiences with this, whether it's moving my stop loss too early, rolling those stops to break even too soon, reducing the take profit, closing the trade early, hesitating to put the trade on, staring at the screen, forecasting what's gonna happen, but not actually clicking the button out of fear. You feel like it's consumed you, you don't know what to do. Look, if any of those things are you, then this video should hopefully help you. I've got five tips that hopefully will help you reduce and eliminate fear in your trading. In order to overcome fear, you first of all need to look into what is causing the fear. Now, it can be different for every person. However, my main, my first main tip is define your edge. And what do I mean by edge? Your edge is essentially the way of putting the probabilities in your favor. You may have heard this term thrown around a lot in the, in the trading industry. It's essentially a specific sequence of events that you wanna see from a technical aspect that gives you an edge in the market, gives you essentially one up on the market. It's your way of entering the market, exiting the market. An edge should be clearly defined from how you will enter. Example, 15 minute POI. We wanna see a one minute change of character, one minute boss, one minute momentum shift. We wanna see a flip, we wanna enter off the flip, we wanna have a five pip stop loss, we wanna cover the low, TP wants to be one to four, we get out full TP. That's an edge, right? Having a specific sequence of events that happen. You can throw in timing. I wanna trade only this time in this session when there's more liquidity, when there's more volume. You're creating your edge. It can be from anything from entering on the lower time frames, entering on the higher time frames, playing off this demand zone, playing off that supply zone. It's your own way to trade the financial markets. Now the biggest problem that I see and that happened to me is most traders, one, don't have an edge, or two, they have an edge, but they cannot stick to that edge. They are not letting the probabilities play out and they are tweaking or justifying or changing something in that edge. And they're basically reconstructing that edge every time they trade, every week, every month. They're adding in new things that the edge doesn't need. Therefore, the edge is never the same. Therefore, your edge, you don't even know what your edge is. Asking you now, do you have a technical edge? Do you know that edge? And if I asked you to tell me your edge, could you tell me it like that? Or would you hesitate, would you second guess? And would you start saying things like, there's a little bit of discretion now, I'm not sure if this is valid, if that's valid. That all needs to be eliminated. This is one of the biggest contributing factors to having fear, is because you don't fully understand or believe in why you're taking the loss. So naturally, if you take the loss, you can't quite comprehend that you've taken it, you can't accept it. Oh, I, don't, I haven't seen this edge play out that much because you haven't done the data gathering. Therefore, you're gonna roll your stops early, or you're gonna move your take profit early, or you're gonna do whatever the crazy shit we do when you get hijacked within the moment. You must know what invalidates and what validates a trade setup, and you must have the discipline to actually stick to those rules. Remember, if you don't have an edge, you just shouldn't be trading. Number two is actually gather data on this edge. Gather data on the specific sequence of events that you're waiting for so that you know that, okay, this loss is normal. It happens, I get losses within my edge. I understand that. If you backtest and everything's always perfect, if you gather all your data and you only log winning trades forever, you never have seen a losing trade in your edge, you're going to tell yourself, oh, my edge never loses. So then when you do lose, you're gonna feel a certain way of, I never lost before, why is that? Oh, maybe I need to refine this, or I need to change this, or I need to do this. No, you just don't have the data on your edge. You're not journaling these losing trades. Big habit I see, and one I fell into myself, it's very easy to do markups every day, and you mark up every winning trade you see, and there'll be like five or six a day, because it's very easy in hindsight to go, oh, look, it went down, cool, I put an RR to on that. However, it doesn't mean that's your edge. How many of those trades on an end of day markup actually fit your edge? For me personally, I only add in a markup on a trade that fits my edge. So there will be days where there's no markups, whereas previously there was tons of markups showing me there's always trades, there's abundance of opportunity. What does that do? That creates a habit that you assume your edge is there every day. You basically just trade fucking God knows what because it's not the edge, there's no specific rules. You can tweak your edge because if you have discrepancies where you allow for discretion or you allow for too much intuition, you're always gonna tweak it slightly to be in your favor in the moment. And when you get the hit, you're gonna go, whoa. And it's because you don't have the data backing that up. 
So having data on your edge, backtest your edge, get live data, emphasis on live. Please go live with things before just doing backtesting forever. See it as an investment in yourself, going live, putting some capital at risk and actually trading that capital would be like if you went to university and paid 30 grand to learn how to do something that you're probably not gonna actually go and do because you won't enjoy. So ensure that you're actually getting back tested data, markup data, demo data, live data before you jump into actually going for funded accounts or trading large capital, okay? I'm not saying put all your money at risk, but you need to have some form of money at risk in order to see how this edge performs live. Getting data and actually journaling your trades, can you safely say that every loss you've taken, every win you've taken, every break even you've taken, have you actually journaled them? Are they in a journal? Could you show me the journal right now? Could you go today? 26th of June 2021 and go, yeah, I took a long on this. This is what happened. Or could you go, I don't really have that, but I don't need that. No, this guy's, this guy's chatting shit, bruv. I don't need that. You do, because that is our only way to see if our edge works. So I know one and two may seem the same, but essentially they are. You need to get an edge and you need to have solid data on the edge, but you also need to be journaling whatever happens in the live market condition. If you're taking L's, understand why you're taking them. Are they part of your edge? Or are you doing something with those L's that isn't your edge, but for some reason in the market, you're getting consumed by thought patterns of take this trade, this could work, that could work. Is it because you're part of a certain community? Is it a friend? Are you on Zoom with someone trading? Are you just trying to force things because you need to earn money because you need to get a living? There are so many different factors that if you're not journaling and not being self-aware and self-accountable and actually writing down, I took a loss here because of this. Did it fit? Yes. No. Okay, so why did I fucking take that if it didn't fit? So if you've done all those things, you have an edge, you have back tested your strategy, you have data on your strategy and you're still not profitable, you need to ask yourself why. This can be a numerous things, but one of the biggest things that I find is could be that you're not actually able to lose what you're risking. So number three would be downsize your risk. Whether you're risking larger capital on your personal funds, whether you're risking one, two percent per trade and you want to downsize it to half percent per trade, anything to get you to click the button to, to reduce the hesitation and the fear of clicking that button. You need to you need to understand that sometimes you can jump in and see numbers that perhaps you have a limiting belief on. Perhaps you aren't able to comprehend 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 running profit. So when you see that, because you've not seen those numbers, you're like, oh my God, I'm gonna close it. Or, oh my God, I can't afford to lose that because it's gonna ruin me. If you're risking something that you aren't okay with losing, then you shouldn't be trading. You need to ask yourself, are you okay with accepting the risk? Can you afford to lose 450 pounds on a challenge? Or do you need that 450 pounds to put food on the table? Because if you do, you're gonna be so attached to that 450 pounds that no wonder you're gonna have fear and you're gonna have resentment when that trade goes against you because you're not only saying, oh my God, I hit stop loss. You're also saying that 450 pound that I needed to feed my family, I no longer have. So now I have to go and tell my partner, I lost all our money because I was trying to trade something with no edge or no understanding in the market. Downsize your risk. You don't have to enter the market straight away and make 100 grand. If you can't make 100 pounds or 1,000 pounds in the market, why the fuck can you make 100,000 pounds just because you have more capital? The capital isn't the problem. What's important is do you have a consistent edge that over the course of 6, 12, 18, 24, 36, 48 months is going to play in your favor? You're never gonna completely avoid losses, they're always going to happen, but does your edge play in your favor based on your risk reward, based on the parameters you've set in your edge? There's a reason these prop accounts have 200, 300K accounts, because they want you to buy them because they make more money from them, and your appeal is, oh my God, if I get 300K and I make 10%, I've made 30 grand, and that's probably your annual salary. So you're just drawn to thinking of it like that, but you're not thinking of it, are you aware and okay, and do you have any limited beliefs that when you see 20 to 30 grand floating profit, you're not gonna shit your pants. Number four is embrace risk. Now, like I said previously, number three, you're always going to take losses in trading and no matter what you do, at some point, you're gonna get it wrong. That's trading and if you're not okay with that and you're not able to accept that, then it's probably not for you. If you can't accept that you're gonna be wrong and you're a perfectionist, then trading's not a bit of you, mate. So you need to either put things in place to understand that and work on that or you need to perhaps look at doing something else because if you can't embrace that when you enter the market with all of the available information based on your edge and you hit that button it is no longer under your control what happens next you've executed your edge if it hits stop loss cool if it hits a win cool but you need to remain detached from either outcome and be like i executed my edge base your results has been a good trader on did you execute your edge every week every month consistently not how much r did you make but did you stick to your edge because if you stuck to your edge you your trade plan you're going to see profitability because you've back tested you have data on this edge 
that proves that over the long run, it's profitable provided it's executed consistently. So if you just focus on executing consistently, only in line with the edge, you embrace the fact that risk and loss is gonna happen and entering the market at any given point, of course, carries a huge risk, but that's why we have risk reward. You risk 1%, you can obtain 5%. So it's worth the risk of losing that one to obtain five. Number five is the old coin flip. I don't know if any of you watched my very first, well, I think it was my second video on YouTube, but I basically showed a, a method with a coin flip, which really helped me with the whole fear thing. And basically what I say is you have heads and you have a tails. You can pick which side you want to be the win and which side you want to be the L. So if you say, right, heads is 5R, tails is minus 1R. If you flip this 10 times or 50 times, you'll see how the probabilities are different every single time. And yes, you have to factor in commissions and spreads before the mathematicians jump on me and go, no, it's not accurate. What I'm saying is, I used to do this. I always keep a coin on my desk, even now I'll flip it and I'll go, right, 50-50 chance, tails, minus one. Okay, cool, so we're down minus one. Flip it again, plus five. So we're plus four overall, cool, I've had a win. Okay, cool, I right, took another loss. Okay, so we're down we're plus three R. Okay, cool, we'll flip it again. We took a win, brilliant. I can change my hand, I can flip it again. Oh, straight away we win, brilliant. So this edge with the left hand, that wins straight away. Oh, we lost. Okay, cool. I'll flip it again. We won. Oh, cool. This is this is looking similar to the right-hand edge. I won again. You see how each time it's different and that will be everybody's edge. Every edge works. So my question to you is how do you see your edge? Do you actually have the data on the edge? Or are you just following someone else's edge but you don't have the belief in it. There's no benefit to someone showing you this works and you not doing the work on it and going, oh, well, he makes money or she makes money. So if I copy that, I'm gonna be profitable. No, you've actually got to do the work, get the belief in that, see the setup happen and understand it for yourself. You might add tweaks. It might not suit your personality or your lifestyle. These are all things that you need to dive into, not somebody else. Someone can show you how they trade. Yes, you can take that on board but then you need to go and do the work on that. Final thoughts, once you conquer your fears, there isn't much left from stopping you from really becoming a consistently profitable trader. Like I say in this video, most of the things are you, it's always you. It isn't the markets hate me or I haven't found the secret code to trade yet. It's that you aren't doing the work enough, you probably have a crowded mind, you have too much going on in your head. A lot of these problems come from our attitudes. They come from our attitude about being wrong, our attitude about losing money, our attitude about leaving money on the table, our attitude about missing out, about FOMO, about what he's doing, about what she's doing. Most of these things, again, they're within ourself. And a lot of the time when you go over losses, when you experience periods of drawdown, if you actually look at the trades taken, I'm almost certain most of those trades, they won't fit your edge. They'll just be things that in the moment you've done based on a weird situation that happened. And you're gonna go, shit, your edge works. There's a reason you have that trade plan on your desk or on your wall or on your laptop or your PC. There's a reason you've put the countless hours into that edge because you know it works. The problem is you and not executing it consistently because you're, you're being distracted or you're doing dumb shit. As always, guys and girls, I hope this helps in some way, shape or form. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed already, hit the button. I'll catch you all next week. Peace and love, gang.